Hello and welcome back to our C++ Primer for Beginners course. In this episode, we'll be looking at creating classes and talk about how we create classes and how we create constructors for our class. So let's get started. So the beauty of C++ and object oriented programming is the ability to create classes. Classes are defined sets of code that includes things like functions and variables and things like that, that are then created anew and instantiated. So that means we're going to create copies of this. So if you're using Unreal Engine, for example, uh, it's that the class uh, is going to be something that you find in your content browser and if you drag that into the world that becomes an instance or an object so in here we can define classes in our C++ we can do with the class name uh, keyword and then the name of the class you want to use so I'm going to use one called customer and actually let's call it player let's keep, let's keep on brand here class player um, and in here we can define what that class is going to actually be so you just put in um, the statement marks like this and then you put in the public keyword and semicolon this is called an access modifier basically it means that everything that we put in after public is going to be available to things outside of that class um, so it's a good way to make things available to share and change outside of it so in here we're going to create a struct as well. So we're going to create a struct called player details, and we'll call it, uh, and put in and define this with uh, a string for their name, um, int for their score, and that'll do. And then before we finish up here, we're going to instantiate our first variable of our struct because this is defining the struct we actually want to create one we're going to call player details and we're going to put in and call it um, my details so each player will have their details of name and score stored in them like so and then to create a new class all we have to do is type in the name of the class we're going to use so we can use a player class and we're going to call it um local player so it's much like it like defining like a variable it looks exactly the same as that you put in the name of the class and then the name we want to call it it's the variable name so now i can access and store anything i want with that local player i can also uh, call any functions they have on it too so for example if i want to access their name or score i can get that through their details by going into local player dot my details dot name and I can see out this for example or assign it let's assign it equals Ryan and then I'll see out that local player dot my details dot name and I'll push play it's going to create a class called player and print out my name, Ryan. Okay, brilliant. Okay, so what about functions? So let's do a function in here that will print out the name for the class. So inside the class public, I'm gonna go down and I'm gonna make a function here, we're gonna void, uh, print name, and we're going to define it as simply C out, and do uh, my details, dot name okay so then therefore down here rather than doing c out local player dot name all here i'll just do local player dot print name like so and that'll give me the same result as we just saw but we're now calling a function instead Okay, let's go a bit further. Let's say I want to set the name. So we're going to do set and print name. We're going to rename this one set and print name. And this is going to have the variable integer, a variable input of string name. And down here, we're going to, rather than set the name here and call print name like so, we're just going to do local player dot set and print name Ryan oh put in quotes Ryan 
like so. And so when I push play on this, we are going to, oh, oh when I do this, sorry, you're going to see one little error. It's not going to come out of anything. And that's because, notably, mistakenly, I just done it as printing the name of the struct. We actually need to set it. So to do that, I'm going to go in here, my details dot name equals name. Okay, and now if I push play, that'll work. We've now got Ryan. And there we go. We've now got a new class set up and we're now accessing things inside our main function a lot simpler. Okay. Now when creating a new class, we can also pass through this name as part of its constructor. A constructor is easily defined as basically you just put in the name of the class again and in brackets you'll put in the inputs that you want to put into it so for example here we want to input the name we want to put in here so we'll put in a string name and leave it like that and then we can define a statement like so and in here this is going to be basically constructors are the very first thing that gets called inside this class and so when we create it down here when we do player local player this is what gets called so on player string name we're going to assign the string name here so my details dot name we're going to take that from there cut that from there and put that in here instead we're then going to go back down to our main part down here and we go local player you see you've got an error now and that's because we've changed the signature of our class to need a name alongside its creation so we do player local player i need to put in brackets the name i want to give it and now we've got set and print name which is just going to print the name of the character okay it doesn't actually need to have a name in there we can get rid of that and we can just say print name instead now and just tidy this up a little bit. Uh, don't need that. And don't need this. Okay. So yeah, um, we've got all this going on. We're going to get some errors down here because I haven't put in the end lines there. So now you see I've got this error here. That's probably because, yep, I've put the constructor here outside the public. It needs to be on the inside of the public. We'll just put that in here too. Otherwise, it wasn't access, well, it wasn't possible for me to see it inside of here. So we need it in public. So yeah, that'll go through there. Um, print name doesn't require any inputs now, so we can get rid of that. And there we go. We're done. So what we've done here is we've created a class that will take a name and then we'll print that name of that class as we create it. So if I were to run this, we should still get saying Ryan. But what is actually going on behind the scenes here is our main program is to find a class called player. And when that player is created, it's going to take a string of a, of a name and it's going to assign that name to its variable of my details, which is a struct. Uh, we have got a function there called print name. And then that's all defined inside that class. So it's all bundled together in this class. So we can minimize that down and there's a class all done for us. Then in the main part of the code, we're just creating a new player by going player, local player, Ryan, and then local player dot print name will print out the name of our player class, or our player value here. Okay. Um, so to access any information like functions or variables inside of a function, it needs to be accessible by the uh, dot the full stop to access that and if something is in private it means you can't access it so for example if I put in a private variable in here private and put in int um, secret and leave it like that um, I can't access local player dot secret I can't access it, it doesn't even come up. And if I try to type it in, I'm just gonna get an error. It just doesn't like it. You can't see it at all because it's set to private. But if I were to put that in here, secret, and take it off here, that will now work. Okay, you can now see it.
So very important to understand about access modifiers, public and pub private. And the reason why you might want something private is that you don't want people to be able to access and change it. And by people, I don't mean people, users, end users. This could be other people in your dev team. You don't want them to change certain things. So if you want to do that, you can put in some certain checks that happened before then by using things called getters and setters, which are specific functions that we make to access and change values. Uh, but there you go, that's classes. And there you go, hopefully now you can see it's quite easy to set up a class and how to declare one. Now in the next episode, we're going to go through a common practice that we see in C++ is the separation of these files out. So classes have their own files, their own headers, and how to separate them out and how to bring them all together using namespaces and other includes. So you can watch the next episode right now over on patreon.com forward slash Ryan Lady. We can find all my videos early from just $1 a month. Massive thank you for all my Patreon members for their support and YouTube members for their support as well. Thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and I'll see you all next time. Bye everyone.